We're back with Aaron Sabatini, Registrar for Entering Museums. This is a very bizarre one, so there's a bit of a lead up to explain what this is and why it exists. So we have to go back to early 1700s. So early 1700s to, you know, honestly, the early 1900s, the main way you learned about anatomy was through dissection. And there was a huge boom of colleges and anatomy theaters that rose in both the United States and England specifically. So there were problems with this. The only people legally that could be dissected were executed criminals because it was viewed as kind of a insult to injury. While there were a lot of criminals, there weren't that many. And the other problem was um, there was no refrigeration. Yeah. So you had about, oh, three to seven days to dissect a body before you didn't want to touch it anymore. <laughs> and it started to fall apart naturally. So these colleges would charge huge amounts of money for students to come in or for you know the landed gentry to come in and pay a fee just to see, satisfy their curiosity. So they didn't have enough bodies. So this very bizarre cottage industry of body snatching <laughs> arose. Now grave robbing's been around forever as long as there were things being buried worth looting. But that usually only affected the very wealthy who could afford to bury right. actual valuables. Okay. This monetized dead bodies. These schools monetized dead bodies, made the bodies themselves incredibly valuable. And these schools would pay good money for people to bring them bodies. They wouldn't ask questions. And they just wanted you to bring them bodies because they were then going to charge all the people coming to these dissections you gotta love it. even more. You got to love it. So you didn't. You it can't was, make this stuff up, by yeah, the way. The, History is stranger exactly. than fiction. It's a very unskilled labor. So these people were called body snatchers, they were called resurrection men, they were called ghouls by all the people talking about them. And it was a legitimate fear, so people started coming up with ways to try to deter this. And so some of the ways was they would have night patrols, they would build watchtowers, they would try to build these almost like steel crypts on top, but it never worked. The body snatchers would either pay off the people meant to guard them, or they would just dig through or pummel through. It's like enough brute force, you're going to get to that body. So then people got creative, and then enters the cemetery gun. <laughs> the, or the cemetery gun. Or the grave gun, depending on how you look at it. Okay. And uh, the best way to describe it, it is essentially a flintlock blunderbuss on a spike. <laughs> In a cemetery. <laughs> In a cemetery. Of course. Yes. What's not so, to like? Yeah, so you have this fluted barrel that it's smooth bore, very wide mouth. You shove various things down it. I'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> And you set it, so generally, um, if it was to protect a certain grave, which what would happen is you had your cemetery caretaker, and you had two options. He might set these up anywhere in the cemetery, or a family would pay for a couple weeks to rent it, essentially, to put it at their loved one's grave, because after two weeks, no one wants the body anyways. Right. So you put this at the foot of the grave, facing the head. <laughs> and so right now, this is a reproduction. This is original to the 1700s. It's been painted over, but that's original. This is reproduction. So generally, there's a little spiky thingy here, and it in a, the original one, you lift it out, you put it onto this base that allows it to swivel. Right, okay. So it moves. <laughs> so you put it at the base, and then you have these three little loops right here. And um, some of them have two, some of them have four, but most have three. And you would put a tripwire <laughs> on each of these. Wow. So the tripwire going to the front, in kind of an arc in front of the right. grave. And so grave robbers, they would usually do their deeds, moonless night or cloudy night, complete darkness, because the caretakers, a lot of them stayed pretty close to the cemeteries. And if they hit one of the trip wires, the gun would swivel towards them <laughs> and then fire. Wow. <laughs> kind of like this. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so. You have to, you know, it's <laughs> clever. I mean, yes. it's crazy, but it's clever. And what was more clever was, uh, so again, like I said, it was, it was this arms race, this cemetery dead body arms race, and these grave robbers would come, and they, they would send people during the day to scope out the cemetery right. and see where they're going to put them. So your really cunning caretakers would move them at night. Right. And so of you course. wouldn't know. Well, who wouldn't? And then they had to get even more creative because you could go three different levels with what you decide to do with this. You could load it with a blank charge to where it would just go off, like make loud noise, and if you're on site, wake you up, let you know someone's there, scare them off, car alarm. Right. Or you could load it with rock salt or bird shot if you wanted to pepper someone, you know, give them a bad evening, but not kill them. Or you could load it with buckshot or large rocks <laughs> if you wanted to blow their lower extremities off. Nice. So, yeah. The cemetery gun. Thanks for being on Curator's Corner. <laughs>